there's a much better way to drill this hole in this piece of wood. That and more coming up. Hi there, and welcome to WB Fine Woodworking. I'm Don. Today I'm going to share with you a special safety tip that I learned here at the drill press. Some of you think of the drill press as a very simple machine and not very dangerous, but you can easily get caught up in one of these. I decided to do this quick safety tip on the drill press after seeing this post on Facebook. Quote, I made a mistake this morning on my drill press and paid the price immediately. I was cutting a round notch in the side of a small piece of wood to use as a clamping call on a round table leg that was broken. I held the piece in my left hand and attempted to cut with a Forstner bit. Unfortunately, the center spur was not in the wood, causing the bit to grab the wood and drag my thumb into the spinning bit. It tore my thumb up some, but not seriously. Hopefully, those who read this will remember if they ever attempt to try something like this, be sure the center spur is in the wood or clamp the piece down. At the end of the video, I'll be sharing a possible solution to what that gentleman on Facebook was trying to do. Keep watching for that. Well, obviously, the gentleman who posted that on Facebook didn't know what he was doing was unsafe, or how to do it so it was safe. So today I'm going to share with you a tip of how you can hold small or strange shaped objects at the drill press and be very safe. Keep those digits away from the drill bit. First of all, underneath the table of my drill press, down here on the stand, I keep two clamps. These are those wooden clamps, twin screw clamps and I keep a fairly large one and a fairly small one. It makes no difference that this is a Jet and this is a Rockler. A bunch of companies make these clamps. A lot of people don't have them in their workshops, but they come in very handy for all kinds of clamping. For this first demonstration, I have a triangle of zebra wood and I want to drill a hole in the middle of it. Now, obviously this is just a scrap, but I'm using it as an example. So I can slide it into the jaws of the clamp and I start getting the jaws as parallel as I can and you have to keep playing with these because you always forget which way you're supposed to turn them to get them to be parallel and also to get the clamping pressure. Now this one needs to come out a little bit. This one needs to loosen up. It takes some playing with these. It's not one of those things that you can do easily. You just have to kind of think about it. And there you go. So if I flip this over, you'll see that the jaw is parallel with this long side of the triangle. And the point is pushing into this other jaw of the clamp. And it's in there really solid and really tight. So there's no way that that's going to turn when I try to drill a hole in this piece. Now I would turn it this way and put it under the drill bit so I'm pushing down on the table. But that's the easy way to clamp an uneven piece. No matter what size it is, I'm just using a small piece with my smaller clamp. You're more likely going to have a shape like this, you know, rectangle or square that you want to drill a hole in. Now some of you are saying, well, I can hold this at the drill press and I'll be just fine. Well, yes, you could, but why take the risk? So in this case, I can slide the clamp up. I can put it in as far as I want to put it in the clamp. I can, again, try to get these sides to be parallel. So now it's in there in the clamps tightly, and if I turn it over, you can see that the bottom is flat here, and the jaws are parallel to my piece. So that's not going anywhere. So if I hold it and go underneath my drill bit, my hands are far away from where I'm drilling. 
So now I can check up my Forstner bit, use my key to tighten it down. Now, this is a bonus tip for you. I use a key to tighten my chuck. I don't have a hand-tightened chuck. I actually have one available, but I don't like them. My hands just aren't strong enough to get them tight enough, especially on real small drills. So I have this key here, and I've tried all different kinds of ways to keep track of these drill pest keys. And the simplest way is a little rare earth magnet up here on the end. I put it up there and it's ready to go. That's about the safest place that you can have it and it's always there. If you remember to put it back. Now, of course, before I uh, start the drill press, I need to put on my safety glasses. As you noticed, I have them up here. I did a video on that. And I also did a video on having these uh, tape measures on all my tools. This is an actual clip from one of my videos. It shows how I held this small piece in the clamps to drill this hole. The hole will be the recess for a nut. If it's possible to do this, this is even a safer way to make a hole in this piece of work. I have the piece of work clamped into my small clamp, and then I have the larger clamp clamping that to the table. It is secure. It's not going anywhere. Coming up. At the end of this video, I'll show you my solution to the problem the gentleman posted on Facebook. Well, I know the first comment down below is, that's not a new trick, Don. Well, I didn't say it was a new trick. I'm just trying to help gentlemen like that one on Facebook by posting this video so that they know about this trick on the drill pests. He came out really unscathed compared to one person that posted a picture of what happened to their hand on a drill press. So I don't like gory stories like that, but this is a trick that's easy to do on the drill press and can save your digits from getting wrapped up in a drill bit. Before I move on, I'd also like to point out that there's another alternative, and that's a drill press vise that looks like this. There are many on the market today. Here's a photo of that same vise holding a small piece of wood. So if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up down below. Ask any questions or make comments down below. I greatly appreciate those and I read all of them. Share this video. If you know someone that's working at a drill press and you know they're not working safely at a drill press, share this video with them or share it with them anyway. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe today. Statistics show that most people that watch my videos haven't subscribed to my channel. And when you do subscribe to the channel, you can ring that notification bell, and that way you know I produce some more videos. And thank you all very much for watching. <laughs>
Now this next step could be done on the bandsaw or it could be done on the table saw. But since we don't need to worry about the quality of the cut, the chop saw is much faster, much easier setup. I've lined the wood up with the laser there. I've got plenty of space over here on the left to hold it with, so I don't need to worry about that. And I can just saw right through. Now, either this side could be used as his call, or he could decide that he wanted this side as his call. And so if he does want that, or he's got two calls.